Hello and welcome to the Car Care Not channel. So folks, finally, after almost two years of waiting, we have a 2018 Camry with an A25A engine for a coolant replacement. In this video, I'm gonna share with you how to do just that the right way, DIY from start to finish. But before we get started, if you're new to the channel, welcome, consider subscribing to the channel, check out some other videos. If you are a returning subscriber, well, thank you so much for watching another one of our videos. And without further ado, let's get to work. So you're gonna to want to lift the car up because these new cars have a lot of covers. You can just use ramps, jack stands, whatever, just do it safely. These covers have a lot of bolts and clips. Any clips that break, do replace them. Take your time, take pictures if this is not something you've done before. That is just, uh, you cannot access the radiator without removing this huge cover, otherwise it becomes really cumbersome. So take your time. One thing about this radiator on the A25, at least in the Camry, if you just take the radiator drain, it'll make a huge mess. So you're gonna to wanna to use a hose, which you'll see me do in a bit. There is no block drain on the A25, so don't go looking for one. Just do the radiator and you're good to go, just like that. Use a hose, drain it, let it finish, and you're good to go. So now that you're done draining the coolant, you must use an overfill funnel. These are available on my Amazon affiliate store. Now, I'm gonna connect it to the radiator. And before we start filling the coolant, Here's what you're gonna do, two things that are different about this engine. So the first thing is, before you start filling the coolant, there's a hose right here for the EGR valve. We're gonna take this hose off, pull the clamp, loosen the hose, and pull it out. You're gonna want to put some kind of towel underneath it, because this is gonna make a mess if you don't. So you get something underneath it to capture the coolant. You're gonna use this to bleed the system only when the car is off. It's just the initial fill that we're gonna put this hose back. Now we're gonna go ahead and fill it with coolant, but you have to watch the hose. As you fill it with coolant, you're gonna notice the coolant will go in the funnel very quickly. So you gotta keep a watch on the hose. The idea here is, as soon as you see coolant come out of that hose, Put it back, that's it. You just want to open an area that is high in the circuit so you can get all the air out. Wait for it until that happens. As soon as you see it, put it back and we're done. Once you get to this point, put the hose back. One thing you need to know about, you need to have your funnel almost halfway filled. Otherwise, you need the coolant here to be higher than this, otherwise, you won't get anything, it'll just stop and the coolant level will be right at the hose. As soon as you see coolant come out of here, put the hose back, reinstall your clamp. And now we're ready for the second step of this process that is different than your average car. Clean up any spill. If you want to clean up coolant the most effective way, use water, just dump a little bit of water in case you spill a lot. Just put some water here let it dry and we're good to go. That's the best way to wash coolant. Now the second step to this process is opening the valves. Typically you can use a scan tool to do that. It basically orientates the valves, puts the computer in a mode that is coolant bleed mode, opens the valves. Since the water pump on this engine is electronic, you want it to run at full speed so we can circulate the coolant everywhere, push the air out. But Toyota, because they are Toyota, and they are actually DIY friendly, believe it or not, although some people don't believe it, there is a way to do it manually. And it's so simple. All you have to do is maintain the engine speed over 1500 RPM when you're in park. So I'm gonna use a pedal depressor, just like this one. I will leave this in my Amazon store so in case you want to buy one. All this does is just holds the throttle. What we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure that our RPM is at 1700, 2000 RPM, that's fine. With the heater off, fan off, and AC off. All that is off, you do not need to do anything. The computer will turn on all the valves, will circulate the coolant everywhere it needs to be. You're gonna run it like that until the cooling fan comes on, then shuts off, then comes on again and shuts off. Then you're done. Let go of your throttle, shut off the car. 
let the, the coolant you'll notice it will burble a little bit when you shut it off let it settle close your radiator cap and we're done it's as simple as that i'm just going to show you how the engine revs up just so don't be afraid to rub it up that's normal to 15 over 1500 don't leave it at 1500 go over so i'm going to go actually almost 2000 rpm here and you'll see how that looks We're gonna let it run like this. Don't be afraid of the high RPM. Think about a long trip on the highway. It's basically the same thing. You're gonna notice that the coolant will keep bubbling. Make sure your coolant in the funnel is not very low. It's always halfway. Don't leave it too low here. We're gonna let the engine run. When the idle comes down like this, go back and double check. Because remember Toyotas, when they start, they start at a higher idle. So we're gonna wanna make sure to raise it up again. Now this is just over 2,000 RPM. We want to be done with this job. The customer has been waiting patiently, which we're gonna talk about the customer in a bit. But we're gonna let it run, let it bleed. We'll fan, the cooling fan will come on twice, cycle on off twice. Make sure your heater is off. I know some folks will wanna turn on the heater. You turn on the heater, it takes it out of this coolant bleed mode. And now we have problems. Heater off, lower motor off and your AC is off completely. And if you have a hybrid model, everything is exactly the same. The only difference is when you rev up the engine, you're gonna to want to put it in maintenance mode. I'll put a link to the video in the description and you want to push the gas pedal all the way to the floor. I know this sounds interesting, but do that and you'll see that the engine actually revs up beyond the 1500 RPM. Now that you're done, clean up, put your covers back on if you took them off and that is pretty much it but as a bonus for this video and since this engine typically is paired with an eight-speed transmission i'm going to show you how to drain it and fill it and the rest of the checking of the fluid level is the same i'll leave a video in the description of this video just the drain plug location is a little bit different so you're going to remove the big cover underneath the engine and transmission there's no way around it on this one same thing with the rav4 same thing with all these models you're going to take the side cover behind the wheel to get to the fill plug. The fill plug is a 24 millimeter, just like before, here it is. Very similar fill plug to any other transmission. So the drain plug on these eight speed transmissions is a little bit different. It's a 10 millimeter hex. You're gonna take that 10 millimeter hex out. Get a good grip on it. There we go. Now we're gonna drain the initial fluid. Then you're going to use a six millimeter to go in. That's the only difference between the six speed and the eight speed. The six speed, the size of the drain plug and the size of the tube will be the same. On the eight speed, it is different. It's actually an easier location. There's no oil pan. Oil pan is over here. So you just let it drain and then drain it one more time and then fill it and repeat the same process as you would with the six speed, just like the other video, which I will link in the description. And you're going to take a six millimeter hex Put it in here and unscrew your tube. And there's the tube. Here's how that tube looks like. Just like the six speed, exactly the same, nothing different, just the, op the outside drain plug is a 10 millimeter. The inside is still a six millimeter. Now that you've got it to a drip, we're just gonna put our tube back. You're gonna just tighten this tube until it stops by hand. Do not use tools. You don't wanna break this tube or force it. That's it, stopped, we're done. We're gonna temporarily install our drain plug, which is not exactly a drain plug, this would be the dipstick upside down. We're just gonna temporarily install it, and now we're gonna add our fluid, just like we do with the six speed, and everything else is exactly the same. So there you have it, folks. That is the coolant on the A25A. Very simple, once you know what's going on. Before we wrap up the video, I wanna say one thing. Huge shout out to Armando, who is the owner of this car. Armando is a viewer. He drove two and a half hours all the way from Wisconsin here just for us to be able to do this video. So every time you use this video, I'd like you 
to write in the comments. Thank you, Armando. He made that long trip, sacrificed his time and his day for the sake of the DIY community. And I am more than happy to accommodate him, get him in here so we can do this video for you guys. So thank you, Armando, truly from the Car Karenat family. Folks, I hope this video was helpful and informative. I hope you learned something new. If you like it, consider giving it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, consider subscribing to the channel. Check out some other videos. And until the next video, folks, may the Lord bless you and keep you. And you have yourself a wonderful day.